Another thing you can do is you can go in here to Z plugin. There's a ZBrush to Photoshop here. So you can say, you know, give me my um, poly paint, render out some lights, give me my poly group ID, subsurface scattering, say send to Photoshop. That'll go ahead and start rendering those passes out. And there we go. However, one thing I forgot is if you go in here to image size, uh, it's 800 by 800. Oops. So if we want to comp together with the 2048s by 2048s we've been doing, make sure uh, either under document, zap link, you stored a custom document, or in here under draw, as long as you use the draw perspective, cranking up your focal length, you can go down here and you can say store a camera. Either way is fine. Uh, but that's just so you can get your camera view back because what we're going to do is go in here to document, turn off proportional, make, or actually in this case, since it's already square, turn proportional on. Let's do 2048 by 2048. Hit resize. Yes. Go in here to document, zoom, click that button and pull up to zoom out. Hit control and to clear our canvas, drag our scarab out, go into edit mode, snap to the front and holding down shift. Go back in here to document. There we go. We've got the layer. Now we can go in here to Z plugin, send to Photoshop CC. It'll go ahead and render out all those passes that we had clicked on, and then we can start comping. So now anything that we render out of ZBrush and Keyshot should have the exact same camera. So when I'm in Photoshop here, I'm going to go to my renderings here. And so this is my latest. So we did a clown pass, an AO pass, and a PSD pass out of key shots. So I'm going to take those. I'm going to say Control X, and then compositing, comp all, Control V. So these are my key shot passes here. Uh, one thing to note is if I drag this uh, EXR into my Photoshop, I have a plugin from 3dplugin.com, EXR-IO. Um, it's just a lot, a lot easier for me to open these particular files, so I can just hit Open. And one thing I'm going to do is go in here to Image mode, eight bits, don't merge, control A, control C, and I'm gonna control V that right into my uh, stack here. So you can see we already have an AO under effects. So let's go ahead and turn off our masks here. So here's uh, the key shot AO. And if I go down to this one and we choose normal, this is the one that we got it from uh, ZBrush. So they're slightly different. You can use both, none, either. Uh, but that's just another way you can get an AO, uh, in this case, out of Keyshot. So we'll go ahead and say no, we don't want to save that. Now the ID map in here is actually going to be pretty useful. Let's switch this back to multiply here. And again, we don't really need this Keyshot AO. I just figured I'd show you how it, how it is used. Uh, but if you scroll down here, you're going to see we have geometry. So we have a subtool ID and a polygroup ID. So in this case, they're both pretty much the same. So if you had different polygroups for different areas uh, other than subtools, you could use either one, but your subtool ID here, you can hit uh, W, make sure subtool ID is selected, uh, use your magic wand tool, or you can go in here to select color range, choose a color, and then change the fuzziness. So either one should work. So now you can have that selection. So if you turn off geometry, you can change your base render uh, in any way you'd like. For example, if you wanted to just add a levels it'll go ahead and auto mask out your levels adjustment layer and then you can go through here and just in that area adjust the levels on that uh, one particular spot now when i drag in my key shot file so here's what we rendered at a key shot so i can do control a control c or if i have this photoshop file open i can hold down shift and just drag it right on here and i can actually replace uh, this i can take this bpr render I can move it up here underneath uh, into materials and we can call this reflection. You can go in here and you can change the blending mode on here. Let's say lighten. I can take this opacity on this layer and dumb it down so we can just add a little bit of flavor from that ZBrush render into this rusty steel if we want to. Let's go ahead and close out of our Keyshot render here. Now, if we want to put in our Marmoset stuff, now this stuff has a bunch of height information that's been added. So it may not be super compatible. We'll go ahead and bring them in here. Uh, so I'm gonna bring in my Marmoset render here. Uh, these aren't gonna match up probably exactly. Uh, again, one more thing. You can do Control-A, Control-C, Control-V, or just Shift-Drag in here. You're gonna see it's just a little bit off. So I'm gonna drag this all the way to the top here. 
drop that opacity down, and we're just going to hold down control and just use our arrow key to kind of nudge this marmoset render into place. Now it's not probably not even scaled, well, it's pretty close. I may not even be scaled the right way. If it isn't, you need to hit um, control T, and uh, it looks like it's pretty centered, maybe it needs to be a, just a smidge smaller. So while I'm scaling this, I'm gonna hold down Alt to scale from the middle. We're just gonna scale it down just a slight touch, hit Enter. And now if I go back in here to Opacity, crank that up, it uh, should be pretty much in line. So again, not super elegant, but it'll work. So we'll call this Marmoset, and I'll drag this back down here to the bottom. And just like we did before, I can go all the way back up here to our geometry layer. We can turn that on. We can say, you know what, give me my subtool ID. I'm gonna hit W for my magic wand tool. And for all of these end pieces here, and you know what, let's switch that to contiguous. There's some subtool IDs that are gonna be very similar, but if I change it to contiguous, uh, it'll ignore it uh, in other areas that aren't connected. So very quickly, I can just grab all these leg pieces here to get my mask, and then we can go ahead and turn off geometry. Come back down here over this marmoset we can throw in. Maybe I want to change um, the hue and saturation. So I can say, you know what, these legs I wanted to be a different color. We'll make those like orange yellow painted legs. No problem. For our eye ray render, we can go ahead and drag that in. Exact same thing as the marmoset render. Um, this one has transparency built in because we had transparency checked. So I'm going to hold down shift. Go ahead and say yes. And this one lines up pretty close. I'm going to throw it again up here to the top just to double check. Drop that opacity down. On this one, let's switch that blending mode to difference. Hold down control. Again, we'll kind of try and center this left and right, up and down. It looks like it's a little bit small. So I'm going to hit control T. Again, hold down alt and make it so that those match up as close as we can. Again, not elegant. I don't feel good about doing this, but I haven't figured out a better way. If you found a better way, just email me and we'll go from there. So here we go. This is our substance. Actually, we call this iRay because you can actually do another substance render just from the viewport. We'll drop this over here. So here's our key shot, our marmoset, our eye ray. You can mix and match between these. If I go through here and I'm like, you know what? I love the head and the legs for my key shot render. I can just move this key shot render up to the top. Again, go back to my geometry here. Say, give me the head. Let's hit W. Select that. I like the head. Maybe the antennas as well and all these legs, I like uh, the key shot version better. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all these. I can turn geometry off. And with this layer selected, I'm gonna do an add layer mask. So now it's gonna mask out everything except for my key shot. And if I need to uh, make adjustments to this too, I can, sorry that this was a, uh... so here's our key shot, it unlinked this. So here's our hue saturation that we wanted uh, just on these legs, it's already masked out. I can actually link that, hold down Alt in between these two and just link that there. We'll turn on Key Shot back on. And if I want to make adjustments to this Key Shot, if it's like, ah, the lighting made it not as contrasty enough, I can go uh, with this layer selected, go through here and just add a Levels. Again, hold down Alt and link that Levels to just Key Shot. Because if I don't do that, when I do Levels, it's going to do everything below that Levels. Hold down Alt and link it just to the Levels or just to the key shot. It's just gonna adjust the key shot area so I can go through here, brighten that up, contrast it up a little bit. I actually like the IRA render pretty decent. I think it's okay. I think I'll go ahead and just use this one. I don't need to pull anything from the marmoset, but I could if I wanted to. You know how to do that now. And up here, you're gonna see we have front lights added, left light, right light, etc. So if you wanna use any of these or even uh, the rim lights here, so let's say take this back left light over here Let's add a hue saturation. Hold on Alt to link just that. Turn on colorize. Make this like a yellow orange light. You can even make it more saturated if you want to. Lightness we'll leave alone. So there's that. And then also let's go ahead and add a levels. Again, hold on Alt and link it. So we can add, uh, crank up that contrast here. So we'll crank these black levels here. So we're just gonna kind of dumb down 
the effect of that light, or at least make it a little bit more isolated on the left there. So there's all the lights here. You've got uh, shadows you can bring in. You've got subsurface scattering mass you can uh, add. You've got your masks here that are already plugged in. So that's just a really easy way to take multiple comps from different programs, uh, put them all in here. And again, if you want to go back to Keyshot, or you want to go back to ZBrush, grab another render. You've already saved the camera view, so anything you change, any materials you pull in that you want to capture, you can just hit BPR, go back down to your render here, click this, BPR composite, name it something, put it in the folder you want, drag it into Photoshop, and I uh, could just continue to add to those layer comps.